last night, second baseman Jace Peterson provided the extra inning heroics in the Braves' walk-off win. Today, it's game four against the Brewers on a beautiful Memorial Day weekend. It's Sunday Braves baseball, and it's coming up next. Memorial Day weekend from Turner Field in Atlanta, Georgia. The Stars and Stripes are out forever, and so is a big crowd here at Turner Field for the Braves and Brewers. Wrap up this four-game series. A chance for Atlanta to take three out of four and get above 500 for the first time since late April. Hi again, friends. Chip and Joe. Happy Sunday to you. Hope you're celebrating and remembering the sacrifices made by the men and women of our military on this Memorial Day. And, Joe, what a great ball game for Atlanta yesterday. A 3-2 win in 11 innings, and the Braves are playing like, well, frankly, we thought they would. Yeah, and a lot to like about yesterday's ball game. They came from behind to tie it up in the middle innings and then, of course, won it in extra innings. But recently, the Braves' numbers look like what we thought we would see at the beginning of the year. Good pitching, solid bullpen work. Look at what they've done in the bullpen over the last nine games, a 2.08 ERA. And an offense that's scoring almost four runs a game over this nine-game stretch, doing enough to win. They're not hitting any homers, but they got 21 doubles over that stretch, and those were key yesterday. And Mike fulton the man on the mound for the Braves, will try to make it 7-3 and three for the Braves in the last 10 games. And he'll face Jimmy Nelson coming off a great start last time out against the Tigers. The Braves and Brewers wrap things up on a beautiful day in Atlanta. Lineups and first pitch coming right up. Braves baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. Beautiful afternoon for baseball in Atlanta. Glad to be back with you here at Turner Field for game four between the Braves and the Brewers. Braves fans young and old ready to chop down the Brew crew and take three out of four before hitting the road to Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Phoenix, Arizona. Mike Fultonevich, the man on the mound for the Braves. 
And his first pitch of the day is in for a strike. Luis Sardinius is the leadoff man, batting first for the first time this year for Milwaukee. And he's quickly down 0 and 2. Greg Council is like Freddie Gonzalez, a ton of different lineups. He's used 44 different lineups this year. And his Academy Sports and Outdoor 9 does not feature Ryan Braun today. Or Aramis Ramirez. And down swinging is Sardinius on a 96 mile an hour fastball. Great start for Fulton Evich. I'll say. Fulton's 2 and 1, 532 ERA. This is what he averages out over nine innings. That's a lot of base runners. A lot of strikeouts, too, as we just saw. But he's had to work out of the stretch a lot so far in his first four starts. Three pitches, three strikes, and his first strikeout. Here's Gerardo Parra. He's two for ten so far in the series. All right, 296 for the year. And a ball high. His Ford keys to pitching success today. Well, we talk a lot about deep counts, right? Hitters working the pitcher and going into deep counts. How about shallow? Let's go shallow counts. He already struck out a batter on three pitches. He's thrown five pitches so far, only one ball. And left handed hitters, 391 average. There's four of them in the lineup today. Par is the first hard hit ball to center. Maven back. He's got room at the edge of the warning track. Two out. And here's a look at Braves defensive lineup. Boy, they played great D in the late innings and extra innings last night. Everybody in baseball is still buzzing about the play Anderton Simmons made to pick off a, a runner after a hit at first base. That was a huge play in the ball game. Pedro Siriaco in there again at third in the series wrap up. Here's Carlos Gomez, the Brewers. Center fielder, normally their leadoff man, but with Braun and Ramirez out of the lineup, Gomez moves into an RBI position. Four homers, 18 knocked in. And quickly, 0 and 2. Yeah, and he is bringing it, getting right after him with fastballs. That was a late swing, funny swing on a 98 mile an hour heater. I'd say he's feeling pretty good here in this day game heat. 79 degrees, it's not scorching. Beautiful day. Braves in their home cream uniforms. Love the look. 0 2 pitch. Swing and a miss at a breaking ball. Fulton Evich with a brilliant first inning. Ten pitches, nine strikes, two strikeouts. Here come the Braves. Jimmy Nelson, the Brewers pitcher, on the bump next.
10 pitches, nine strikes, and a one, two, three inning. And now the Braves come a calling at 21 and 21. Here's how Freddie lines him up. His academy starting nine features Todd Cunningham and left. A.J. Brzezinski back in harness behind the plate. And of course, Joe, last night's hitting hero, Jace Peterson, leading off. Jimmy Nelson, nine starts in day games. Not as much success as he's had otherwise. Great big guy. 6'6", 245 out of Niceville, Florida. Was a Braves fan all his life and loved John Smoltz. And he's coming off a great start against the Detroit Tigers. Eight innings of three hit, one run ball. Mid-90s fastball, slider, and a spike curveball that he just developed. He's been a top prospect for the Brewers for quite a while. Ten and two last year at Triple A. But in the big leagues, things have been a little tougher for Nelson. He's four and thirteen lifetime. Jace Peterson leads off with a two sixty four average. And that missed low ball two. Great celebration yesterday for Jace and his teammates to win that ball game. And there's a lot to celebrate when something like that happens your first walk off hit all the hard work you put in all your life to get to the big leagues and do something like that to help your team win a game. That's that's a big deal. That one taken for a strike. It's two and two. Yeah, I think Jace was asked after the game. What were you most happy about your first homer being a grand slam or the walk off hit and he said well they were both pretty awesome. <laughs> and he's right they were. Slam down in Miami. The hit here yesterday. Now he's worked a full count. He seems Joe very comfortable in that leadoff spot for the Braves. I think because of some success, getting on base, which is the job of a leadoff man. I think he's enjoying it. He's done a good job. Plus, he's hitting really well at Turner Field. It's just a point under 300 at home. Swing and a miss. Peterson wants to know if it was a strike. The answer was yes. Marvin Hudson has the plate today. And Nelson has a punch out today. There was a change, Joe, in the umpiring crew. Yeah, Chad Fairchild is, uh, I guess, on vacation leave. So Jim Joyce was behind the plate yesterday. He'll be at second today. And Tom Woodring is at third base. There's Jim Joyce. And there's Tom Woodring. I love watching Jim Joyce call balls and strikes just really appreciate how good he is behind the plate here's Cameron Mabin Cameron's got a good run going he's got an eight game hitting streak for the Braves and his average at 255 His good work in the month of May is our Georgia lottery hitting the jackpot feature. 357 average, extra base hits, a lot of runs scored, three swipes. He's doing it all, playing great defense too. This guy throws hard too, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got a real good fastball and this. Spike curve ball that some people might call a knuckle curve where he kind of props up his index finger has been a nice off speed addition for him. This guy was the PCL pitcher of the year last year and was only there half the year. It's 10 and 2 that led the league the 10 wins 146 ERA that was tops in the league 114 strikeouts and 111 innings. Strikeouts were highest in the PCL. Two balls, two strikes. And that moved Maven off the plate for a full count. Two deep counts from Jimmy Nelson for the first two Braves hitters. Cameron, three hits, three RBIs against Milwaukee. Ian Peterson have been a nice one two punch in front of Freddie Freeman. And he's aboard with a one on walk. 19 walks for Nelson in 51 innings now. And here's the rest of their defensive alignment. Brewers have had trouble catching the ball with 
great consistency this year. Chris Davis, man, really without a position. They stick him in left today. Gomez, a good center fielder. Para, Gold Glover in right. Lind and Herrera at the corners, as Joe mentioned. No Braun, no Ramirez. Sardinius and Gomez, a young double play combo. combo and Martin Maldonado's behind the plate. This guy's numbers indicate that if you don't get him early, you don't get him. He's been pitching deep into ball games. In fact, six out of his eight starts, he's pitched into the seventh inning. Early in the game, a high batting average against him. And after about the 15th or 20th pitch, his batting average against goes to 199. He's got a man aboard, Maven. And Freeman pops it up deep short. Looking out is Sardinius, and Davis comes on and makes the play. I'm not sure if Sardinius really saw that ball. So Davis, a nice job to bail out his shortstop. Freeman pops out on the first pitch. Maven at first for Marquecas, now two out. Yeah, never was Sardinius ever as happy to see Chris Nelson as he just now was. Should have said Chris Davis. It was Chris Davis. And here's Nick Markakis. Nick's got a four gamer working, hitting 308. No homers, 12 RBIs for the Braves right fielder. He's got a 5 for 11 series working. Maybe twitching at first. Not going. And a letter oh. high strike. Cameron's looking for a milestone today. He's sitting on 99 career stolen bases. And we've already seen the arm of Maldonado in this series. He's got a cannon back there. So it'll be a fun matchup. Not going. Markek has fouled it back, 0 and 2. Great percentage, too, at almost 80%. Maldonado getting his signs from the Brewers' dugout. And now the 0 2 pitch. And it took that away. One ball, two strikes. They've had 33,000 plus here yesterday. Looks like there might be more than that here today. Perfect day for a ball game. He's playing good baseball right now. Chance to get to 22 and 21 if they can win today. Maldonado wanted time and got it. Runner goes the pitch high Maldonado's throw is right on the money. So Marquecas will get a new set of strikes when we go to the second inning as Maven's thrown out trying to steal and we're scoreless after one.
to good starts. No score at Turner Field. Trivia time as well. Our trivia question brought to you by AT&T Uverse. Which current Braves coaches played for the Milwaukee Brewers? I know one. Yep. I know two. Got it. You want to go ahead and answer it then? They want us to. Kevin Seitzer. Yep. Eddie Perez. Hmm. They're going to hold the answer for a while. So we'll see if Joe got it right. Adam Lind leads off the second for Milwaukee. You always like going on a road trip with a good trivia question. Bang! Right out of the gate. I mean, there was no, there was no pause, no hesitation. Knocked it right out of the park, I think. Lind takes ball three from Fultonevich. Lind hit a rocket in the late innings yesterday that the Braves turned into a double play. And a four pitch walk puts him aboard to start the second. This is part of the inconsistency that that you. I guess you say you live with and roll with with a young pitcher. He was unhittable in the first inning. There's no way anybody could even put the bat on the ball and then walks the first guy in the next inning on four pitches and didn't come close. And not coincidentally a left hand hitter which has right. been part of Mike's issue. And he's got Chris Davis the Brewers left fielder and he's back on the beam with a strike. Davis 226 three homers 14 RBIs. Two hits in his last 22 at bats. Another perfect pitch. There's so much to like about Mike and the things he brings to the team to the table with his his great arm. But I don't know how much better he would get in the minor leagues. Right up the pipe. Peterson drifts out. Maven calls him off. And Cameron takes over and takes care of Davis on an 0 2 pitch. There have been a lot of seasons where uh, Mike probably wouldn't be allowed to pitch. And I say allowed, he wouldn't be in the rotation here with the Braves. This year is one of those years where he's got an opportunity. And he can kind of learn on the job a lot of things. He, he already knows a lot about pitching, but maybe not the art of pitching. And he, he'll get better at that at this level. I, I, I love the idea. I, personally, I'd rather see a young guy hopefully figure it out up here than wonder year after year watching him dominate at AAA to see if they can make the adjustments you're talking about. Well, he just showed you one he's already made slide step. That was something he had to improve on his speed to the plate. To keep runners from just stealing him blind. Lind is short lead at first. Herrera the batter and takes outside even count. And also the fact that if you're on a if this is a ball club that you expect to win that's contending for a title maybe a world championship there may not be room to let him grow at this level. You, so you, can't, you can't give certain games away or right. concede certain games saying he's done in a learning process and we'll live with it. Well, a different type ball club may not have that luxury. Or if they do have the luxury, maybe as your sixth or seventh starter, yes. long man in your bullpen. Exactly. But the Braves, as you see, Herrera flail and miss. He was overmatched. That's three strikeouts. The Braves don't envision at this point Fulton Evich being a relief pitcher. They love his makeup. They love this. And they think he can be a dominant power pitcher at the top of a rotation once all these things click for him. There are a lot of scouts that think that um, it, it's kind of mixed on would he be better in the bullpen or as a starter. But I say, why not find out first if he can start? And at this stage of his career, to use your term, the inconsistencies, I don't know if he can pitch him in the bullpen. Too many hits, too many walks. But yes, plenty of power pitching. It's a great opportunity for him. Yeah. This is Hector Gomez. And he 
Jones just pumping 95 mile an hour fastballs right by the Brew Crew right now. Well, and he's got AJ back there today too. So, like the first pitch here to Gomez, he didn't just rear back and fog one. He threw a breaking ball to start him and got him to swing in it and look bad. Slowly hit to the left side. Nice pick. The flip to second in plenty of time to force Lind. And Fulton Evich is through the second inning. Three strikeouts, no runs in Atlanta. Today, got a treat, got the chance to see this guy back in the cages. Chris Johnson taking BP before today's game. Of course, he's been out with that broken left hand and has been down in Orlando doing rehab. About the last week and a half, he told me he's been able to really start working on his swing again. He had to give that old fracture a chance to heal. And so once that was done, he said about the last week and a half, he's really been able to get back into it. But he said today he felt great. There was no pain. He's off to Gwinnett tomorrow, guys, for a couple of days. If all goes well down there, he hopes to rejoin the team on Thursday in San Francisco. Yeah, I talked to him before the game also, Jen, and he was very excited about getting back. He, he feels very good. As, as you said, his hand, uh, there's no pain. So that's enough to excite anybody with the prospects of getting back active. Nobody's talked about it, but third base has been the Bermuda's triangle this year for the Braves. Chris Johnson, Kelly Johnson, and Phil Gosselin. All capable of playing third base. All three of those guys have been hurt. As Nick Marcakis gets another look at yeah. Jimmy Nelson. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good point, Chip, because Gosselin was just really getting a chance to play on an everyday basis and swinging it great when he got hurt. Asked Freddie about Kelly Johnson because we never really got a severity of the oblique problem. I don't know how you grade them, but Freddie said it was apparently a pretty bad one. He's, he's talked with Kelly, and from his understanding, Kelly says he's feeling better. But if he laughs, if he coughs, if he moves the wrong way, it still grabs on him. And so Kelly Johnson's still a ways away with regards to his oblique problem. And those usually are tough injuries to get past. And isn't it interesting that all three of those guys got hurt and didn't get hit by a pitch? You know? Right. One sliding, one diving for a ball, and one on a swing. One two pitch for Marcakis. And golf toward first. Lynn gave ground, tricky hop. Nelson got to the bag. Good play. Almost had to take that one out of Chris Siegel's umpire shirt. Chris was trying to make sure he stayed in there to call it fair or foul. And right there where Lynn caught the ball. We've had enough umpires hit by batted balls for one year, don't you think? Mm -hmm. How about Andrelton yesterday? Tough break. You know, rocket down the third baseline at, yeah. the, at Chad Fairchild. Might have ended the game right there. Maybe that's why Chad's not here today. You know, maybe he got hurt. 
That's a good point. This is Todd Cunningham, and he lines one the other way down the left field line. Davis over quickly. Cunningham on his way to second, but the game's first hit, a one-out double. I hate to say, well, that'll get him going again because he came into the game 9 for 23, but he actually had been 0 for his last 10, so that snaps that. Good piece of hitting. Be nice to get an early run on the board against this guy. As Joe said, the deeper Nelson goes, the tougher he is to hit. Here's Przinsky. AJ at 293. Three homers, 16 driven in. And took a high breaking ball. One ball, no strikes. Rip at that ball and fouled off the screen. Two balls and a strike. Headed to LA after the game. Jay Brzezinski hopes to scratch Dodger Stadium off his homer list. Dodger Stadium, one of the parks that he has yet to hit a big fly. And so we'll have three cracks at the Dodgers Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. 2 1 pitch. Way high. Snap throw back to second and nice play by Sedinius to keep that on the infield. Last inning when Maldonado threw out Maben, he got a good pitch to throw on. It was a high fastball, but I as impressed as I was with his arm and his throw was how quickly he got rid of that thing. Like a middle infielder. So AJ might see a fastball here, three balls and a strike. He didn't. That's that knuckle curve, spike curve. Did Don throw his that way? Did uh -huh. Don have a? He did. He had a his index finger spiked up on top of it. You can see it there in his grip. And it works with that kind of break on it, and that kind of tilt with that speed. It's also, also actually a changeup for him. And beautiful. Little broken bat number past the mound. Catcher running. Throw to first in time. And Prasinski screaming in his helmet as he is out by a step at first base. Cunningham unable to advance. And now there are two men down. Nice play there by Herrera. Made it look easy. And AJ having a chat with his helmet. Hamilton Simmons. 17 RBIs for the year, but 19 runs scored in the month of May. His average at 245. Those have held him down in the series. Andleton just one hit in 13 at bats. Seven for his last 49. So after a nice run hitting second with that seven for 49 stretch, Simmons batting down in the lineup. Let's see if he can provide a two out hit. He's done an excellent job of hitting with runners in scoring position and two outs all year. 285 as a team. That pitch by Nelson 
a good pitch pitchers pitch in that. He keeps him keeps him honest on the right side. So if he does throw that breaking ball it's hard to lean out over the plate. Back toward us. Two balls at a strike. Braves have 192 RBIs as a club this year. 57 of them have come with two outs. That's a great quality. Andrelton Simmons. Is hitting 205. With runners in scoring position this year. We'll try to improve upon that with two outs. And it's high ball three. Pedro Siriaco, the eighth place hitter, waits next. That was his slider. It's a hard slider that it's in the mid to upper 80s. The breaking ball is more in the 82, 83 mile an hour range. And the fastball, as you've seen, has been low to mid 90s. He threw a breaking ball to Przinski on a 3-1 count. And that was a fastball up and away to Simmons. And Nelson has two on for Siriaco. Second walk in as many innings. And here's Pedro. He's knocked in three runs. Mr. Siriaco's made the most of his at bats. Been terrific as a pinch hitter. For the Braves this year. Two for six, one of those hits a homer. Well, I beg your pardon, that's incorrect. Siriaco, two for seven with two RBIs as a pinch hitter. Homer was for Kiaspo. Apologies. Two on, two down. No score. Home second. And Nelson got a high strike. Well, I know this. If he gets a base hit here, I'm going to vote for Pedro. And we had tots for breakfast. I mean, what else is it all just sort of ties together? I've still got some <laughs> in my pocket. <laughs> no balls at a strike. Up and in. He's obviously either not afraid to pitch inside or he can't help himself for pitching inside. He's having a hard time right now getting the ball down. He, his fastball's got a lot of life to it, but he's having a hard time calibrating it down in the zone some. But this may be in keeping with what we know of him struggling first couple of innings. And if he gets by that, watch out. Bounding ball toward third, tricky hop, and the peg to second is in time, and that'll retire the side. Braves threaten, can't score in the second. We go to the third.
A standout high school football player from Texas, Jeremy Border played four years at McMurray College before enlisting in the Army. Displaying the same leadership and hard work as he did on the field, he earned his Green Beret while serving as a Special Forces Weapons Sergeant. But in 2012, Jeremy was killed in action while defending his fellow soldiers in Afghanistan. Fox Sports honors Staff Sergeant Jeremy Border. Really appreciate Fox Sports showing us those profiles. I think it serves all of us well to remember what this holiday weekend is really all about. Yes, it's friends and families and picnics and cookouts, but honoring those who are here and remembering those who aren't. Yeah, that's a very sobering reminder right there. So we head to the third inning with Martin Maldonado, the Brewers catcher, then Nelson, the pitcher. Got their pitcher hitting ninth for the first time in a week. And back to the top will go in Luis Sardinas. No score. Brewers without a hit. Three strikeouts and a walk for Fulton Avich in his first two innings so far today. They haven't been able to hit the fastball, so why not try a bunt? Yeah, you might see a lot of right handers trying that, even those that can't run. Brewers without Jonathan Lucroy. He's been missed. So Maldonado, their regular catcher, until Jonathan comes back from a broken toe. Already very economical for Fulton Avich by comparison to other starts. 27 pitches, 20 strikes. He was 9 out of 10 in the first inning with a couple of strikeouts. 1 2 pitch. Didn't get the corner. Little number toward first and right at the bag. Freddie Freeman's able to make the play. Well, we have seen a ton of late swings from the Brewers' right handed batters already today. Trying to pull it right out of Brzezinski's glove. And here's Jimmy Nelson. He said John Smoltz was his favorite. Smoltz and Maddox, Smoltz. but he loved the Braves out of Niceville, Florida. Second round pick. Uh, out of University of Alabama. Well, he swings the bat pretty darn well, at least on that pitch. And Nelson has the first Milwaukee hit. His second of the year. Neither one of these pitchers has faced the opponent before. So there's no history of anybody. Nice swing right there. Well, since Tom's not here, I'll just go ahead and say it. He's an athlete. Okay. That ought to cover it for the rest of the day. <laughs> exactly. Got, got our quota in. Here's Sardinius. He struck out to start the ball game. And a little tapper toward short. Simmons will go to second for one. And Sardinius, with good speed, beats the wrap at first base. Hey, Jace Peterson did a little different bit of footwork around the second base back that time. Did he straddle it? Sort of use the base as protection with the pitcher charging in at second base. Well, I know he's working real hard on trying to change his habits so that he's not so predictable. So the Braves get the leading runner. Then will bring up Gerardo Parra. Parra has the hardest hit ball of the day for the Brewers. A fly ball to deep center. And Mike hits the glove of Brzezinski. Strike one. That, that pickoff throw. <laughs> Took off Freddie Freeman's glove at first base. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that. 
That's how hard he throws everything. Line drive to left. Cunningham. Good jump. And goodbye, Gerardo Parra in the third inning. No runs to hit. A man left. Fulton Evich leads off in a scoreless game next. of yesterday's game do up second this inning that was Jace Peterson in the 11th coming through with the hit and look at the emotion you gotta love it Jace told me today that was the football mentality coming out a little bit a lot of emotion from him said it was awesome to celebrate with his teammates and that brings us to our lows and never stop improving because that's exactly what Jace has been doing look at that improvement through the first few games of the season and then since April 25th his average has gone up multi hit games RBI he's been bringing it with his bat and Chip Joe as you guys were just talking about doing some work in the field as well. Yeah all of that's just getting better and better Jen and uh, I especially like the on base percentage and the RBIs he's driving in runs as he did yesterday he's up to 18 overall and 16 during that stretch you just pointed out. Good stuff. Let's see if Jace will have a chance to hit with a man aboard here. His pitcher, Mike Fultonevich, gets things started in the third. There's two hits combined so far as Nelson and Fulte are dealing on a beautiful Sunday. The pitch is high, ball one. Mike's got a hit. He's also got three RBIs. And missed inside ball two. Same place. He keeps missing up and into right handers. The off walk to the pitcher would be nice. where it came from and both pitchers have a base hit today. Fulton Evich also with his second hit of the season. Tell you what, he's been impressive. That was a fastball 92 93 kind of coming in on him. He got the barrel to it. Well done. And that was a smart decision by Nelson. Reaction try to reach for that ball with a bare head and then whoop. That's the moneymaker. I'm going to. That one sailing to center field. 
That's a good start. Lead off man on for the Braves for the first time today, and Jace Peterson's the hitter. Ball one. More pitches out of the strike zone than in the strike zone for Nelson so far. He's walked two men. Now a visit from Maldonado. There are several similarities between Nelson and Fulton uh, Some of which are. He had a great year last year in Triple A. What was there left for him to do? He got called up uh, and went two and nine for the Brewers last year and they suffered through some learning curve with him too, an ERA just under five, but they knew there was no way he was going to get better going back to Nashville or in this case this year, Colorado Springs. So here he is and he's improving, he's learning, he's getting better and a veteran catcher out there to try to help him out along the way. I don't know if you'd agree with this or not, but the learning curve for a pitcher I think takes so much longer as opposed to say a Jace Peterson. Remember when he started First couple of weeks, Jace was struggling to keep his average in the 140s, 150s, but he plays every day. Right. A starting pitcher gets the ball and then has to wait four days to go out every fifth day to try to improve from start to start. Yeah, or find out if the work he put in in the bullpen on a side session is going to pay dividends. Two balls, two strikes for. Peterson and Jays bounces one up the middle that's going to scoot through for a hit back to back singles up the middle for Atlanta and the Braves are in business with Cameron Maben coming up and I think power pitchers are slower to develop and learn those things and get more consistent than those finesse sinker slider type guys who typically have a little better command. Well that was definitely a seeing eye hit for Jace. Fourth hit of the series. And that brings up Cameron Maben who walked in the opening inning. You have to know too about the character and the backbone of that major league pitcher too when you put him in a situation like the one Nelson is in and Fulton Evich. Broken bat bouncer toward third. There's one long throw to first is in time a double play. Nice decision by Herrera at third base. A couple of steps to his right stepped on the bag and threw across to double up Maven. The barrel of the bat ended up in the stands. Yeah I think I'm hopeful that it landed in an aisle way. I'm, I think it might have. Smart play by Herrera. So Maben's doubled up Peterson in scoring position for Freddie Freeman and that backbone issue. Remember Tom Glavin John Smoltz pitched here in Atlanta on some teams that weren't particularly successful. They weren't good. Let's be honest and they really took their lumps their first couple of years in the big leagues. But when they figured it out they figured it out very quickly. They both. Our Hall of Famers. Well, that's about the fourth trip already by Maldonado to the mound. We're in the third inning, and Marvin Hudson went out to speed things along. Freddie swung at the first pitch and popped out in the Atlanta first and took that one high for a ball, which is where Maldonado wanted it. High target. Nelson wants a reset. He'll get one. One ball, no strikes. Freddie's been productive with men at scoring position and two outs, a 353 average. He 
He's knocked in five of his 22 runs. In that situation, that's what he's got here. And they're pitching him very carefully. Ball three. Now let's see if they can go ahead and put him on. They will. Pick your poison. You want Freeman or you want Marcakis? Marcakis has been a terrific contact hitter for Atlanta. Let's see how this works out. Intentional walk. Every team has a meeting before a series with a team that they don't see very much of and in this case this four game series between the Brewers and Braves and I'm sure that one of the discussions was that we don't want to let Freddie Freeman beat us. Well, you know that's going to fire up Nick Marquez and see if he can do something about it. And strike one on a foul ball behind the plate. Hector Gomez really plays Nick as a pull hitter at second base. He's got a lot of territory up the middle if he can go just to the left of Jimmy Nelson. Opposite field in the outfield. Got good arms in the outfield all around. Para probably has the best of the three. He's in right. Nick it, got jammed. Over he's two. getting in on some guys' hands big time. That was 94. Remember last inning, AJ was yelling at himself going down the line for that broken bat. Hard to even call it a, a flare between the mound and short. We'll call it a woo. Yeah. <laughs> he also broke Maven's bat. That turned into a double play. Changed the inning. 0 2 pitch. Breaking ball. Hard slider. Takes care of Marcakis. The pitch around Freddie Freeman works out to the Brewers' advantage. We go to the fourth. Newbies, Joe, are our T Mobile game changers. Everybody's contributing. That's what's a nice thing. And Cameron Maven, who was platooning a little bit at the, at the beginning, has pretty much nailed down the center field job. He's leading the team in stolen bases. You see Mark Kakis's numbers. And Brandon Kenneff, who actually was uh, up and then back down to Gwinnett, has come back strong again and just two hits allowed. I'd say that's doing pretty good, too. Tanevich, little bouncing ball off the bat of Carlos Gomez. Peterson charged and got him by a quarter step. Bang, bang, play at first. Jace got his man. One man down. Craig Council to the top step. Might be challenging the call at first. Let us see on replay. Nice play by Peterson. Got him. And that's what. Craig Council is told, so no challenge. Good call. 
The Seagull got it right. And here's Adam Lind. Lind walked and was forced out at second in the second for Milwaukee. And he ah. takes a strike. Lind's a former Toronto Blue Jay. This one's popped up left side. Siriaco says he's got it. He does. And there's the second out. Speaking of newbies, a couple of young Braves fans are watching the ball game today. Poppy and Tristan Webster. With their mom and dad, McCall and Sean Webster. Big birthday party with the grandparents, Fredo and C. Mastroani. Spoiling them rotten today up in Alpharetta. So happy birthday to them. As Fultonevich keeps pumping in strikes. 36 pitches, only eight balls. And he's 12 out of 14 with strike one today. Well, that makes a difference. And he's ahead of Chris Davis. One. A little outside, even count. Milwaukee heads home. They've got the Giants next. Giants made news a few moments ago. They've designated Casey McGee for assignment. Is that right? He's trying to replace Pablo Sandoval at third base. Hasn't worked out. The Giants are hoping he'll go to Triple A and try to work his way back to the big leagues. But looks like Casey McGee won't be facing the Braves when we head to San Francisco after our Dodgers series next weekend. Ah! Two and two the count. Screen still a 2 2 count. Marlins finally won a ball game. They beat Baltimore in extra innings last night. Took them 13 innings to win one to nothing. And they're winning again today, four zip at Marlins Park. And a high fly to right. Marcakis retreats, still going back, still going back. A step shy of the wall makes the play. That ball was mashed. The wind blowing toward left. Davis hit it to right. That might have saved Mike fulton -Evich. Patriotic crowd at Turner Field in Atlanta. But the offenses are red, white, and blue. No score after three and a half. Our pitcher's duel continues into the home fourth. Brewers nothing. Braves nothing. This is game four of the series. Braves had a promising inning brewing last time up first and second with nobody out. But Jimmy Nelson broke Mabin's bat. He hit into a double play and then 
Nick Marquez struck out after Freddie Freeman was intentionally walked. Todd Cunningham starts it off. Todd doubled with one out his first time up. He showed bunt and took low. One ball, no strikes. Braves are playing good ball. They've won six of their last nine games. Offense is scoring about four runs a game in that stretch. The starters are pitching deeper into games and more importantly the bullpen which had really had a rough go for about three weeks at the end of April and into the first two weeks of May is pitching a whole lot better 2.080 RA over the last 10. Nick Massett has deepened the bullpen. Luis Avilan's gotten some big double plays already in the first two months. Johnson and Grilly have done their thing in the eighth and ninth. Good breaking ball evens the count. It's two and two. Cunningham, Prasinski, and Andrelton Simmons in the Braves' fourth. Bouncing ball foul. Todd snaps an 0 for 10 with his one out two base hit. And he got jammed on a pop up the short. Boy, Nelson's really getting the ball in on the Braves hitters knuckles. Good start to his fourth inning, one man down. Fans follow the Braves all year long with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, statcast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. AJ Prasinski bats. Foul. Well, as his old broadcaster Hawk Harrelson would have said, a little duck snort was hit by Brzezinski beyond the pitcher's mound that Elian Herrera grabbed and gunned him out to first in the second inning. And he too badly jammed by Nelson, He's coming off his best start of the year against the Tigers. He's got a good fastball. 0 oh 2. Swing and a miss. There's that breaking ball that took care of Brzezinski. And quickly, two men are out in the fourth inning. We'll be headed to Hartsfield Jackson International Airport after the game, where our pal Mac Honey is busy making the burgers, peanut butter sandwiches, and pouring the ice into all the red solo cups for our trip to Los Angeles. And our friends at Delta do such a great job getting us from city to city. Thanks for that. See you back in a couple hours, hopefully, with smiles on our faces after polishing off the Brewers. Here's Simmons, two out. Nothing in one. Three strikeouts for Nelson today to go along with three walks. Struck out five, walked four in eight innings against the Tigers, still threw just 108 pitches against Detroit. And a high fly ball hammered down the left field line. Could he keep it fair? He could not. Right size, wrong shape. About 15 feet foul, but very well hit. And quickly 0-2. Idea. Nelson just missed. One ball, two strikes. That one 
skipped up there. It's two and two. Cunningham popped to short to start the inning. Brzezinski struck out. And after nearly missing a solo homer, Simmons now has a 2 2 count coming. You can see how they how excited the, and why the, the uh, Brewers are excited about this guy, the way the ball comes out of his hand so nice and easy. Deep count for Simmons. And a shot toward Davison left. Chris is there to retire the side. Three up, three down as we head to the fifth, still scoreless. Beautiful looking ride. We weren't flying to Los Angeles. I'd consider borrowing the keys to that Genesis and making the trip via car. As Eliane Herrera skies the first one to center, there's out number one. They are beautiful and pretty inside. Can't be more impressed with Mike Fultonevich today. Very efficient. Getting ahead, lots of strikes. Not trying to overpower the baseball, it seems, Joe. I mean, yeah. he's just dealing. Today. Well, he's had several pitches, fastballs in the 92 93 range that have been strikes. Like, kind of like to get ahead in the count. And he's handled the lefties, too. He's given up only one hit through four innings. And Hector Gomez sprays one out of play for a strike. The same accolades you were giving Jimmy Nelson and the Brewers are the same things that the Braves are saying about Mike Fulton Evich. Incredibly high upside with this kid. And it's it's fun watching him go to work every fifth day. You really don't know what you're going to get, which is part of the excitement. But when yeah. you see these flashes of excellence, you really get excited. Well, he's uh, Drew just looked it up. He's averaging right at 18 pitches per inning coming into the start. Today, innings one through four, 10, 14, 9, and 9. Not many good swings against him. And a 2 2 pitch for Hector Gomez. Struck him out. That ball exploded down and into the right hand hitter. That was at 96. Miles per hour, two out. See when you can reach back and 
pull that 96 to 98 out. He's popped 98 once today. That's amazing. I'd love to see that replay again. Did you see Perzinski's glove hand? I did. How he caught that ball? How much recoil there was in his left hand? And it's because it was moving so hard in. A lot of force. That's why even the guys that play Major League Baseball and struggle to hit 200, I tip my cap to them. I don't know how they do that. It's just amazing. That ball hammered to left from Martin Maldonado, and it's a 1 2 count. Yeah, he got a gift there. He got a breaking ball that didn't have a whole lot going. We'll do it again a ball and two strikes Spurs are without three of their really important players. Jonathan Lucroy Gene Segura the shortstop and Scooter Jeanette. Jeanette's down to triple A Segura's got a. A finger problem and Lucroy out with a broken toe. And two starters not in the lineup today. Braun. One of the hottest hitters on the planet and Ryan Braun for some reason I can't believe Braun. Would sit today. As hot as he is. And Ramirez. That's downstairs. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah, I think Braun and Bryce Harper, at least in my opinion, have to be neck and neck for player of the month in the National League in May. Right. But Hunter Pence is making a charge for the Giants. He's back. And a swing and a miss. Five strikeouts for Fulton Evich. He'll start the sixth inning with the pitcher. He's due second. Braves and Brewers still looking for our first run today. Trivia question earlier today. I mean, Joe was sitting fastball, and I mean, he knocked it out of the ballpark, over the fence, onto Lansdowne Street. Which current Braves coach has played for the Milwaukee Brewers? And you said right in the wheelhouse. I mean, just killed it. Yeah, Seitzer, Perez, 98 mile an hour fastball right down the middle, and he belted it. Sometimes you guess right. You know. <laughs> well, Kevin's done a nice job. And Eddie always does a nice job. But this is maybe the most dramatic offensive philosophical turnaround that I can remember with the Braves yeah. as far as the strikeouts are concerned to go from a power laden ball club that struck out a lot to changing that overnight to one that makes consistent contact and to cut strikeouts by a hundred from one point in last year's season to the same exact point this year I think is incredible. They're playing good baseball. We showed that graphic their last nine games, how the 
pitching has improved, especially in the bullpen. Offense is doing enough to score and and win, averaging right at four runs a game over the last nine games. Pedro Siriaco leads off fifth. And a little number hit toward third. Herrera's got it with a bare hand and got Siriaco for out number one. This has been a really odd series, hasn't it? Yeah. Braves blew him out on Thursday. The Brewers blew out the Braves on Friday. Yesterday was an extra inning game, and today we're scoreless. See if Fultonevich can one up Nelson in the hit department. Mike single leading off the third inning for the Braves. A clean hit up the middle. Braves have three hits, the Brewers have one. And that's taken high. You'd have to say after 42 games, the Braves have to be thrilled with what their offense has done as a collective body of work. I know we were all, and as were all the experts around baseball, saying, how in the world are the Braves going to score any runs after trading away Upton and Gaddis and Jason Hayward? Offense, for the most part, hasn't been the problem. Or as big a problem as many feared it would be. Now the pitching's reverting back to the mean. And pitching, as you said, over the last nine, ten games, like we thought they would from the opening bell. One ball, two strikes. And Fulte's down swinging. And that's out number two. Fourth strikeout for Jimmy Nelson. Well, he's getting that breaking ball where he wants it now. He wasn't able to do that early on, but it's all of a sudden another out pitch for him. As you said, this is where he starts to get tough. If you don't get him early, you might not get him at all. And now Jace Peterson hits. He singled in his second of two trips. There's that hook again. Strike one. He threw it the first pitch to Siriaco, too. Getting it in now, he's yeah. getting the outside corner. Yeah, he's dropping it where he wants it. One ball, two strikes, space is empty, and Peterson drives one toward right. Para, though, is going to measure that one up and retire the side. Off we go to the sixth inning. Pitcher spot due first for the Brewers.
Nelson and Fulte have not disappointed. No, Nelson left a couple of guys on base in the second and third inning to pitch around that. But for Mike Fultonavich, he's walked one and he's given up one hit. He walked Lind leading off the second inning and gave up a base hit to the pitcher in the third inning. Those are the only base runners for Milwaukee. Let's see if Mike can get his pitching opponent to start the sixth. He's looked terrific. Just one hit. And out of river over the outside corner. The other thing I like about Mike, he's got sustainable 94, 95, 96 mile an hour heat. Pretty good hook right there. He didn't get the call, but a good pitch. Four on the corner, one ball, two strikes. And Nelson took that right out of AJ's glove. And keeps the at bat alive. It's one and two. And he hit a decent fastball for the base hit his first time up, 92, I think it was. Four mile an hour breaking ball retires Jimmy Nelson back to the top of the order one down in the sixth. That's the first called third strike today as well. Everything else had been swinging. So here's Sardinius is struck out and bounced into a force play. First time he's batted lead off with Milwaukee. And he takes a strike. Just like that, it's nothing in two. Brewers traded Giovanni Gallardo to Texas. Sardinius came over in the trade. When Gene Segura got hurt, Sardinius got the call up, and he guides one just foul past third. 0 oh and 2. Popped him up. Who wants it? Simmons gives way to Cunningham. Todd's got it in foul ground. Boy, what a asset to have a guy like Cunningham in left field, knowing that he's kind of a natural center fielder. Can really get good reads. Real good speed, covers a lot of ground. Beware of Gerardo Parra. He's lined to left and fly to deep center. Steve, right <laughs> one. Parra hitting 291 now, and he just picked off Carlos Gomez. Auto checks. <laughs> <laughs> Not only did he hit him, but Carlos, the bat went in the air and then hit Carlos on the way down. Oh, that's classic. What do they say about paybacks? Yeah. Watch this. Now the bat goes in the air and hit him. <laughs> you remember? It's like. Wiley Coyote with the anvil, right? <laughs> down goes Gomez and down goes Para. <laughs> Seven strikeouts as this game heads to the bottom of the sixth inning. Hit it the other way, dude. <laughs>
is my hero. And that young man in uniform is Petty Officer Second Class Benjamin Witherspoon from Loganville, Georgia, our Budweiser hometown hero on Memorial Day. And as is the case on every one of the honorees at Turner Field, a great greeting going up that walkway from all the Braves fans showing their appreciation. What a beautiful family. So we salute. Petty Officer Witherspoon and all the veterans in attendance and those of you all across Braves country today. Thank you so much for your service. And look at that. What a fantastic shot. Awesome. Cameron Mabin leads off for the Braves in the sixth. Nelson and Fulton Evich. Strike after strike today. Yeah, need to get a base runner on of any kind. They've been reached with a one out walk and then was thrown out trying to steal in the opening inning. He also had a broken bat double play ball. Good rip at that one, two balls and a strike. Really happy for Cameron. You know, he came over from San Diego. He's been a well traveled player. Marlins, the Tigers, Padres, now the Braves. And it seems like something's clicked since putting on a Braves uniform. Well, and I patted him on the back the other day and told him what a good job he was doing. And he said, man, just a lot of hard work. <laughs> oh, boy. Not sure about that one. Yeah. Looked a little wide. May have clipped the outside corner. That was the slider. Let's check out the Sherwin Williams painting the corners. He got a break there. And he buries one over the inner half, and Maven could do nothing but foul it off. Two balls, two strikes. Mets and Pirates are tied 1 1. That game's in the fifth inning in Pittsburgh. Mets have had some tough times. What'd you hear about David Wright? No. We've been wondering when's David Wright going to play again? Remember, he's have, had the back problems, and Terry Collins kept saying, well, he's going to start. Resuming baseball activities and then it would get pushed back and pushed back. There's a reason for that. Two balls, two strikes. David Wright's been diagnosed with spinal stenosis, a narrowing of the spinal column at the bottom of his back, and it's caused him some discomfort, shutting him down again for a week, and then hoping that that rest and rehabilitation time will allow him to progress. I know all about that. I'm a lot older than David Wright. He's a young man. I have to be battling that already. 2-2 two, two pitch. And that's low. I mean, you talk about no pun intended, but for a Mets club that's having trouble scoring runs, they were counting on getting David Wright, the team captain, back. Yeah. Doesn't sound like that's going to be happening anytime soon. It was a hamstring to begin with, Correct. wasn't it? But now a bad back for David Wright. Terrible blow for the Mets. They got off to such a great start. As Maven bounces a ball foul again. Good battle. Jonathan Nice and Francisco Liriano are the pitchers today. That's saw Matt Harvey get clobbered yesterday. His worst start for the Mets. He gave up seven runs in four innings, including a couple of long home runs to the Pittsburgh Pirates. Maven digs in with a full count and shoots it into center field. Good at bat for Cameron Maven. And there's Beautiful. that leadoff man Joe was calling for. Nine game hitting streak for Cameron. Got in on him a little bit, but that's okay. He was covering the plate, making sure he had that breaking ball accounted for. Fastball, not a bad pitch. Fought off straightaway center. Good start to the inning. And that'll bring up Freddie Freeman in time for our. Coors Light cold hard facts today. Look at what the Braves have done in critical offensive situations this season. These are great. First pitch swings, second in the league. Scoring position, we've been telling you about that since day one of the season, and bases loaded. Look at 366. Cameron Maven at the top of the list on that one. What is he now? Like four for seven, five for eight, something like that. Maven.
Freddie Freeman loves the first pitch as you know he's hitting 364 on the first pitch this year. And a low throw gets away from Lynn. That'll bounce to the tarp and into the stands. That's a shame. With Maben's speed, he might have been able to make third on the play. But as it stands now, the throwing air has him in scoring position with nobody out. And if you've been with us throughout this series, you know that we've talked about one of the areas for Milwaukee that's really been plaguing them has been defense. Bad throw. Lynn kind of olayed this a little bit. It was a short hop to be sure. And I know that Nelson fired it over there, but He's kind of stuck his glove out there hoping it'd find it. That's the 38th error this year for the Brewers. And Freeman <gasps> took a high breaking ball. Strike one. Get him over. If you drive him in in the process, all the better, but get him over. This guy's been really tough. Only one team in baseball's made more errors than Milwaukee, and that's the Oakland A's. High and tight. Oakland's committed 46 errors in their first 45 games. Standing Freddie up a little bit to get him off the plate. Maybe something off speed to follow. No, nope, backed it up. Two balls and a strike. Just something he can play pepper with with the right side of the infield. I mean they put the shift on him expecting him to pull the ball. Now they can't with a runner at second. That stayed up and away. Three balls and a strike. When Freddie's going good, it's a dangerous proposition to pitch him away. You want to pitch him away, to your point, because he's trying to pull the ball. But when Freddie's really going, he can shoot the ball to the left center field gap on that outer pitch. Sure can. Now he's in the driver's seat. Three balls and a strike. And a missed inside. Freeman takes a walk. First and second, nobody out. Markakis the batter. Fourth walk for Nelson. He had four walks in eight innings last time out against the Tigers. Let's see how the Brewers play it. Let's see what Markakis has in mind. Has bounced out to first and has struck out. Good speed at second. Brewers looking for a ground ball. And he missed low and another visit from Maldonado. Not quite locating that curveball like he did an inning or so ago when Siriaco let off. It was last inning. Got a ground out. Threw a real good one to Jace Peterson on the first pitch. Now all of a sudden with runners on base he's trying to be a little precise and not quite hitting that spot. Big gap in right center for Nick if he can pull one. And that went a little high. Two balls no strikes. Not close. And Nelson pitching himself into a big mess. A leadoff hit, an error, a walk, and now a 3 0 count to Marcakis. And the bullpen begins to work. Jefferson Cotts. To 
of course a hard sinker baller looked good yesterday. That went in for a strike. Will Smith pitched here yesterday too. Boy, did he recover nicely. Smith, of course, the focus of all the excitement on Friday night or Thursday night, I beg your pardon. Three balls and a strike. And ball four. They're loaded with nobody out. Best chance of the day for either club. Five walks. Nobody out. And with all the action they had to have in their bullpen on Thursday and Friday and yesterday, you wonder who's available for Milwaukee today. Well, I'm guessing beyond the two guys that are already warming up, They've got Blazek who worked three innings on Friday but wasn't available yesterday. Hopefully for them, he'll be rested up enough to work today if they need him. So Rick Kranitz breaks up the meeting. It's funny watching Adam Lind as Marvin Hudson made his way to the mound. Lind was kind of brushing him aside with his up with his left hand saying, go, hey. Give a few more minutes to talk it over. Marvin had none of that. Yeah. Broke it up. It's a hot day down there. He looked like a bowling ball going out there and knocking all the pins <laughs> yeah. down. Corners are in. Middle infielders would concede a run for a chance at a double play. Rounded foul towards the Braves dugout by Todd Cunningham. Nothing in one. Hit that one right at Chris Johnson. Stay out of the way, Chris. Well, the Braves have done great work with the bases loaded this year. 15 hits in 41 at bats, a 366 team batting average. So that goes back to the Kevin Seitzer hitting philosophy, one that Johnny Gomes taught us about or told us about. Don't worry about knocking them all in. Get that guy in at third. Yeah. Let the next guy get in the guy from third. See if Todd can do that. The 1 1 count. Not with that pitch, and it was nasty. 1 and 2. Back foot breaking ball. His knuckle curve. And in a good spot that time. Probably not a strike, but Cunningham couldn't lay off. Little number hit toward the shortstop. The catch made there for the out. That was some excellent base running by Freddie Freeman. He knew the shortstop was behind him, but he had to make a determination whether or not he was going to be able to get to this ball that was basically hit right at Freddie. Breaking ball it jammed him. And then at the same time, try not to get tagged. Well, you made the point earlier that the biggest asset for Nelson today has been when he's been in trouble, his ability to break bats and jam hitters. Brzezinski, Maben, Cunningham, just to name a few. Oh, he's got AJ up there and a quick strike. And AJ late again. Well, he's got to like his chances right now. I mean, if he can get AJ to hit the ball on the ground, what he wants. To see happen as AJ get a breaking ball or something and top it or get jammed again with a fastball, just keep it from hitting the ball to the outfield. That's what he wants. One ball, one strike for AJ Perzinski. Oh, he got the breaking ball and he wants that one back. Well, he was looking for it. He stayed back looking for it, got it, missed it. Because it was up. It was not a good one. Crowd trying to cheer on Krasinski. Bases loaded, one out, one ball, two strikes. Hot shot off the second baseman's glove. Out there, safe there, and the Braves lead. 
A diving try by Gomez at second. It tipped off his glove. Everybody had to hold up for a moment. Maven scored. Pruszynski busted down the line. No double play, and the Braves break through on an infield shot. Well, Jimmy Nelson is upset with his shortstop. And it's because you can see Freddie Freeman was standing right there at the back. They could have gone to third and gotten Freddie easily. He was not going to have a play on AJ because AJ was hustling down the line after the crack of the bat. And as you can see, that wasn't even close. But Nelson was kind of yelling at Sardinius, like, hey, you had a play at third. In fact, he was using his glove to motion over there. So there's a break. The youthful Brewers infield. Caught up in the moment. The Braves have scored the first run of the game. That was a real break. Lad is not done yet. First and third with two outs, and Andleton Simmons the batter. Shot to left field, a base hit, two to nothing. Look at Simmons clap as he makes his way to the first base bag. Boy, that helps. His 18th RBI. The single and walk that started the inning have scored in the Braves' sixth. And that's the end of the line for Nelson. Slider, high one. He was getting that breaking ball up a little bit this inning, and that was reason enough for Craig Council to go get him. Good piece of two-out hitting here by Andleton. You know, Joe, you said earlier that Nelson and fulton are awfully similar. In this case, one sequence changes the entire inning and the entire game for the Brewers right handed starter. He departs trailing by two in a game that could very well be tied. or computer at foxsports.com slash south slash delta. Good luck. The Braves have struck for a pair of runs in the sixth inning. Andleton Simmons with a big two out hit scores Freddie Freeman made a couple of terrific base running decisions in the inning by the way. And they've chased Jimmy Nelson and Jeremy Jeffress is now on to pitch. Boy is this guy tough and a sinker balling machine. 23 games, 2.49 ERA, strikeout per inning pitched, eight walks total in there, 94 to 97 on his fastball, and wait till you see the movement on this. Got a curveball to go with it. Jeffress was a number one pick by the Brewers back in 2006. He was the 16th overall pick that year. Went to Kansas City with Lorenzo Cain, Alcides Escobar, and Jake Odorizzi for Zach Greinke. Unieski, Betancourt, and Cash. Then to Toronto for Cash, and then the Brewers signed him back as a free agent in 2014. One ball, no strikes. But not once, but twice. 
Jeffress was suspended once for 50 games in 2007 once in 2009 for 100 games for violating the minor league drug treatment and prevention program. That's why it's taken him so long to get back to the big leagues. Started last year with Toronto and was designated for assignment in early April. So well, Yaka rolls it foul. Maybe that story will have a good ending for him. You know, yeah. I, I'm sorry that he uh, messed up twice. He's fortunate that it didn't end his career. He's got a one last opportunity and hopefully he'll make the best of it and it'll be a good ending. Because you're right, he's he looks to have really good stuff. Uh, the ball just explodes out of his hand. One ball, two strikes for Pedro Siriaco. You get traded for a guy as good as Zach Greinke. That tells you all you need to know about what Kansas City thought of this kid. And you know, the Braves are going to see Kershaw and Greinke out in L.A. Back to back games on Tuesday and then Wednesday nights. Monday's game is an 8-10 Eastern start. That's the Memorial Day ball game at Dodger Stadium. First pitch at 10-10 Tuesday and Wednesday. 10-10 p.m. that is. Strike three over the inside corner. And Jeffress takes care of Pedro Siriaco. The Braves, though, cash in the first two runs of the ball game. And we head to the seventh. Thing added up to a big inning for the Braves who scored twice a moment ago. Well now they were going to get a run on this as this play developed because AJ beat the throw to first but you can see Freddie Freeman wasn't even halfway to third. So if um, Gomez Sardinius Sardinius yeah if Sardinius gets the force out at second turns and gets Freddie in a run down or throws him out at third the innings over that would have been the third out. And Andrelton Simmons never would have come to the plate to drive in a second run. So Carlos Gomez will lead things off for the Brewers in the seventh. He's happy to be out of the danger zone, which is the on deck circle. And a nasty breaking ball from Boltonevich. Boy, he's pitched a super game. Sure has. Only 67 pitches over six innings. This was a bow locker. And that hurt. We could hear it upstairs. 
Gomez got drilled. Backhand or forearm. Oh boy, right in the hand, like the heel of the hand. He's in a lot of pain. It's like the baseball's been hunting him down the last couple of innings. You recall in the sixth when Gerardo Parra was up, a check swing foul ball. You know, they took him out in the on deck circle, and now he's hit by a pitch. As you said, the backhand of Gomez, we could hear it splatter against. At 96 miles an hour. Take a listen to this. He's already had one stint on the disabled list, but I don't remember what it was for. Hamstring. Okay. 15 games in the first week, week and a half of the season. And he's trying to get some get some feeling on the hand. And again, the baseball has been finding Gomez all year long. You might recall a frightening incident with the New York Mets when Carlos Gomez was in the batter's box against Noah Syndergaard. Kevin's for ear flaps there. The Brewers then went to Detroit and he had a home run in his next game. So he's hit by a pitch. Remember, that's his throwing hand. So I don't know if he'll be able to continue defensively, but he's a 20 homer, 30 stolen base guy. He can impact the game still on the base pass with nobody out. Let's see how Craig Council and the Brewers try to play it here in the top of the seventh. First time Fulton Evich has been in the stretch since the third inning. And he's got Adam Lind in the batter's box. He's walked and popped out. Ball one. It's certainly not what he wanted to do after getting a two run lead is put a guy on base to start the inning. Ball two. The deepest Mike has pitched in a big league game is six and two thirds innings with the Braves. That was two starts ago in Cincinnati. He did have an eight inning start against Norfolk. Gave up one earned run and lost one to nothing. When nubbed foul, two balls and a strike. Only 72 pitches. You can see the great strike to ball ratio today for Mike. Hopefully, after the hit batter, he can get back on track. Ground ball from Lind would be welcome. Two and one. Popped him up. Into shallow right. Marcakis battles the sun. He's got it for the first out. And that'll bring up Chris Davis. Remember, the Brewers do have a Ramos Ramirez and they do have Ryan Braun on the bench. The downside of that for the Brewers is, well, they're not starting the game and won't get three or four at bats. The positive side is, if it's close, Craig Council can use either one of those men whenever he wants in an impact situation at the plate. He used Chris Davis, did counsel in the sixth inning yesterday. And he took Mike Fires out of the ball game. He was pitching very, very well to try to bust the game open. Didn't work. The Brewers are playing shorthanded on their bench. They only have four extra men available to pinch hit. That is really. Cramped the ability of Craig Council to make any moves. 
pinch hitting wise or defensive wise. One ball, no strikes. Another pop up. That one headed for the stands. AJ can't get it. Now remember, one of those extra men is a catcher. So you really only have three guys. Yeah. You're not going to pinch hit your catcher in the National League more often than not. Davis has flat out twice. And he waits a 1 1 pitch. 93 and back out of play. 1 and 2. There didn't Yikes. get the call. Yikes. Sherwin Williams painting the corners a little low. Well, according to that, no, it wasn't. Breaking ball hit in the air towards center. Maven dives, can't get it. Cunningham backs him up. The throw's gonna come towards second. And the Brewers have runners at first and third with one out. Odd route by Maben in center field. I don't think he got a good read on it. Like you, I thought he thought he had to cut across that this ball was driven a little better, and it wasn't. And then it started dying, and when he had to start trying to come in and make up ground, he couldn't get there in time. So Roger McDowell quickly pops out of the Braves dugout. Mental reset for Fulton Evich here with Elian Herrera coming up. Just out of his reach. And we've said all day that unlike the first couple of games of this series, the wind's been blowing from right to left. So. The misjudgment and that stiff breeze kept pushing the ball further and further away from Maben, even as he gained ground. He couldn't get there. So let's see if Fulton Evich can end it right here. He's gotten Herrera twice once on a strikeout, once on a fly ball to left. That action has begun in the Braves' bullpen. Double strider with a hit batsman in the inning. Pop out now, a windblown single and a foul ball back to the screen. That was a good swing. He was on that 95 fastball. Herrera has not hit into a double play this year so far. At least do. A strike out too. That one a little bit above his hands, and he couldn't catch up to that one. Herrera came out of the Dodgers organization. Back to the screen foul. Non-roster player for the Brewers. We had a couple of interesting names in camp. Remember Pete Orr? Uh-huh. He was in Milwaukee's camp. Tried to make their club. And Don Trell Willis. Started in spring training with Milwaukee before hanging him up this spring. Pitch all the way. One ball, two strikes. Good battle with Herrera here. A ball and two strikes. Brewer runners at the corners. And one out. Here it comes. 
Fly ball to left. Cunningham broke in. Now drifts back. He's going to make the catch. The Braves will concede the run on a sack fly by Herrera. And the Brewers' defensive decision making in the bottom of the sixth inning means it's a one run game instead of a tie game. Gomez scores on the sacrifice fly. 2 1. Good at bat by Herrera. And Hector Gomez will bat. So Foltinevich has gone six and two thirds to this point. That matches his high with Braves. Let's see if he can make it an even seven and leave with a lead. Strike one. <laughs> He's due first when the Braves come up. Way ahead, 0 and 2. Put him away, call it a day. He's due up first. Give way to a pinch hitter. He's had an outstanding outing. To get this guy to cap it off. His 87th pitch was clocked at 97 miles an hour. That sustained velocity we were talking about earlier. Let's see if he can make it work on a one two pitch. In the air to center, Maben is there. Anyway, Mike, seven innings with a one run lead for Mike Fultonevich. The last pitch clocked at 97 again. He allows a run on a hit, a hit batsman. But Mike Fultonevich, one run on two hits through seven innings of play. And as we head to the seventh inning stretch, the king size right hander for Atlanta maintains a two to one lead. As always on our home Sundays at Turner Field, our crowd will rise, see a nice video presentation, and then enjoy Timothy Miller, who will perform another outstanding rendition of God Bless America on this Memorial Day Sunday at Turner Field in Atlanta, Georgia. Land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with a light from above, from the mountains to the prairie. To the oceans, white with foam, God bless America, my home, sweet home.
Delta Airlines and your local Ford dealer. Dad, you're not going to win it. Miss this year's Father Daughter Day, Saturday, June 6th, when the Braves take on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Ticket packages are available and include a commemorative Father Daughter T-shirt and a pregame parade. Plan a memory your daughter won't forget by visiting Braves.com/slash Father Daughter. See, you know, I like that. I like that Father Daughter thing. I remember your dad always talking about for those business fans special yeah. how how many businessmen seem to show up with their daughter so we're gonna have more than one father daughter day this one an official one though yeah. apparently here we go to the home seventh and <gasps> look who's in the batter's box yeah he's gonna finish it up looks like love it why not Mike Fulton Evich has pitched gem Seven innings of two hit ball and a bouncing ball out of play. It's nothing to the other side of that is not just is Mike pitching an excellent ball game Joe. He's pitching an excellent ball game on a day when the Braves needed him to take this ball deep into the game. You bet. Saving the bullpen. And he's still like we showed in the top half of the inning. Still throwing hard so he hadn't lost anything. He's not tired. So good for Freddie. To let him go up there and hit for himself and stay in the game. He's down on strikes. That's two for Jeffress. We go back to the top and Jace Peterson. By the way, we were wondering would Carlos Gomez continue to play for the Brewers? Yes, is the answer. He's out there again in center field. Watched him make his warm up throws in between innings. Wasn't a whole lot of zip on him. And that right hand to me looks a little swollen. Understand that after he got clocked with a 96 mile an hour fastball. And it's his right hand, his throwing hand. So keep that in mind if the Braves have any action here in this inning. See if he's able to continue and make strong throws. That's low to Jace Peterson, two balls, no strikes. You mentioned a couple of days ago that at the trading deadline, if the Brewers decide to try to move some people. This guy right here is going to draw a lot of attention if they decide Jeffress. Oh. Two balls, no strikes. Starting pitching is always an expensive commodity to get, but the way the bullpens are stacked now, I would say the price tag for guys like him are as high, if not higher. Anybody that's scuffling. In their bullpen, he would be a nice addition. Three balls, no strikes. And on four straight, Peterson's aboard. He's on twice a day again. A single and a walk for Jace. Raiders are seven and two since he's moved to the leadoff spot. They're leading today by a run and looking for more with Cameron Maven up. Maven's walked, singled, and scored. Nine game hitting streak for the Braves center fielder. And it skips up there. One ball, no strikes. Marlins five, Orioles one in the eighth. Pirates now seven one over the Mets. Meeting on the mound with Jefferson Maldonado. Well, I'll tell you who's upset with this, and then that's Ed Mangan. Maldonado's wearing out the grass. <laughs> Between home plate and the mound. Well, he could fix that, you know. He could do like they do in Arizona and have that strip of dirt. No, that'd just encourage him. <laughs> that's right. Was it you that told me that Ed Mangan's the only groundskeeper in baseball history that names every blade of grass? Yes. At the ballpark? Uh huh. And those between the mountain home plate are close personal <laughs> friends. <laughs> yes, they are. What pitch is in for a strike. Well, we'll get some tender loving care for the next 10 days while we're out of town. Flames are back in Atlanta after our trip through LA, San Francisco, and Phoenix. The Pirates will be here June 5th, 6th, and 7th, then San Diego 
for four. Greg Kimbrell and Justin Upton will be back in Atlanta beginning June 8th. Maybe Melvin Upton too for that matter. Yeah. He was yeah. supposed to be starting a rehab stint with the El Paso Chihuahuas. And if Melvin wants to take heart in anything it's the fact that former Braves have had a pretty good luck this year. Yeah with all due respect to Craig I just as soon say hello to him and. Let him watch the game from the bullpen. Two balls one strike. I'm sure in the case of. Kimbrell that's going to be an emotional homecoming as it were here to Atlanta. For the first time he visits the. Visitors clubhouse. At Turner Field Justin Upton's done that before he's been traded he's been. Moved from the Diamondbacks to the Braves and now the Padres. Three balls at a strike. Maven took it full count. It's been a little tough for the Padres, by the way. They've fallen to fourth place, the four under 500, in seven games behind the Dodgers. Yeah, a big disappointment for them to be where they are right now with all the changes they've made. Full count pitch, runner goes. Pitch lashed into the seats out of play. Williams Perez will get the ball tomorrow night. Brett Anderson will get the ball for the Dodgers. There's a seat lefties back to back. In the first two games against L.A. Braves have only seen four left handed starters. And if you don't believe me, ask Johnny Gomes. I was going to say, he's really fired up. I've got to give you Anderson. Then I'll get, go get Kershaw. And then Bumgarner is going to probably face us in San Francisco. But you know, he's up for the challenge. Well, Williams was awfully good in his first start. Runner goes again. Pitch bounced up the middle, right to the second baseman. And the throw to first is in time. That is terrible wow. hitting luck. He was headed for center field, but Gomez was right at the bag. And the Braves are doubled up. Swinging is Sardinius on a 96 mile an hour fastball. Go to pitch. Swing and a miss and a breaking ball. A 2 2 pitch for Hector Gomez. Struck him out. That ball exploded down and into the right hand hitter. That was at 96. Well, Fultonevich has been terrific. As you see, one of Joe's keys economy. He has been outstanding. He's maintained his fastball velocity. He's had a good breaking ball. But 
Yeah, keys to the game. Shallow, shallow counts. A lot of his strikeouts have been on no more than four pitches, so that's why he's still in the ball game and still strong. Seven innings, the most he's thrown as a brave, and Jason Rogers is going to stand in and pinch hit. Rogers, then Ryan Braun is on deck. The council thinking about using two of his four bench players in the late innings here. Yeah, taking his catcher out, leaving him one. Action is beginning in the Braves' bullpen. Ground ball to short. Tricky hop. Simmons stayed with it. Loads up and got Rogers one down. Luis Avilan and Brandon Kniff are the two working in the Braves pen. And here is Ryan Braun. Did some research on Ryan Braun. Look at what he has done this year on the first pitch. That's pretty good damage. Yeah. Seven of his 11 homers. So be aware. And that's excellent scouting and excellent execution. On took a breaking ball. Strike one. Braun is as hot as you can be. 11 RBIs in the last five games. And he lines out to third for the second out. Fultonavich is looking in at A.J. Brzezinski like, boy, did we get away with one there. Same pitch, another breaking ball. Ooh. But left it out over the middle of the plate after starting it inside and right at Syriaco. So, barring Braun remaining in the game and disaster late, we'll next see him in July up at Miller Park. And here's Luis Sardinius. Stay right call. 0 oh 1. Did you see that from AJ? I did, and it's uh, just going to comment on it because it's such a veteran technique and way to frame pitches. Almost stole it. Popped up out of play. There are some who think that's a lost art in baseball. It shouldn't be. But boy, you're right. It is such a valuable tool. Pitch framing, not just pitch sequencing, but just that subtle little turn of the glove to make. Maybe C plus pitch look like a B plus pitch. Maybe you get one or two a game. And a breaking ball on two strikes is served into right field by Sardinius. And he's aboard with a two out hit. Now Gerardo Parra is the batter, a left handed hitter. And Freddy Gonzalez has gone with Fulton Evich as far as he can. It's going to be Luis Avilan. Yeah, another breaking ball that he was leaving up this inning. He left two up. He got a called strike, got the line drive out from Braun, but. Couldn't escape that one. What an outing. Great job. Standing ovation for Mike Fulton Evich. Attaboy, kid.
Cherry 5-Hour Energy Shots, helping support Special Operations Warrior Foundation. Braves fans, don't miss out on a David Justice bobblehead. Tuesday, June 9th, told you the Padres are coming to town. That's what we'll, we'll be playing here at Turner Field. The first 20,000 fans will get a bobblehead featuring Braves legend David Justice. Can't wait to see David at the ballpark. At least I hope we'll be here for that. And hope you will be too. Get your tickets online at Braves.com slash tickets. Great job by Mike Fultonavich. Best start as a uh, big leaguer. One walk, seven strikeouts into the eighth inning. But now Luis Avilan, great numbers for him. Fifteen inherited runners, only one has scored. And one area where he's improved but continues to improve, Chip, is against left-handed hitters. Last year that was a struggle for him. This year they're hitting 258, but it's getting better all the time. And he's got a tough lefty here in the eighth inning. Back-to-back -back games for Avilan. Pitched an inning in two-thirds against Milwaukee yesterday. Got two outs with one pitch on a double play ball. Just needs one out here to send this one to the bottom of the eighth. His old sinker is back. That's a good sign. One ball, no strikes, and time called. Braves bullpen this month. Collective ERA down over a run per game from the month of April. There's a strike. What? Braves pen toiled to a 464 April ERA. They're at 351 entering today's play. And over the last seven games, 1.77 is the bullpen ERA. All tie and Parr didn't like it. It's one and two. He didn't like the pitch before. He thought it was high. And that's why he reacted that way on the second one. Sherwin Williams scraping the corners or the lines. Parr better be careful. Marvin Hudson and Bryce Harper had an issue in Washington. Marvin let him have his say here in Atlanta. The pitch. Strike three called. He knew that was coming. Parting shot from Gerardo Parra. And Luis Avilan gets his man and sends it to the bottom of the eighth inning. 2 1. Atlanta leads it. Freddie Freeman will lead things off. Fans, international pop sensation Charlie XCX will perform after the game on Wednesday, June 10th. That's a free post-game concert presented by Coca-Cola 
and Delta Airlines. VIP field and backstage passes are available now. Get your tickets at Braves.com slash concerts. Ryan Braun remains in the game. He'll play right field. New catcher for Milwaukee. Centino is behind the plate. And here's the man that created the fuss on Thursday evening, left-hander Will Smith. Struck out three years yesterday in an inning and two-thirds. Numbers for the year, good numbers, low 90s. Up to 94 with a slider that you just saw there. Smith suspended eight games for the foreign substance on his arm. Wonder if he'll have company at the hearing because Brian Mattis of the Orioles got caught yesterday. No word on his suspension as far as I know at the moment. Shift on for Freeman. Two quick strikes from Will Smith out of Noonan, Georgia. And up and away. One ball, two strikes. Can't imagine Madison's suspension would be any less than Will Smith's. Maybe with the weekend. All the judges and juries are going to be ready to hand out justice Monday or Tuesday. And Freeman's out on strikes. You can understand why Milwaukee likes Will Smith, and you can also understand why Freddie did what he did on Thursday. He had to. It was obvious. Smith got caught, and I think he was embarrassed by being caught and reacted rather inappropriately. He is appealing his eight-game suspension. He said not because I'm trying to shy away from doing something wrong, but he feels that the length of the suspension is unjustified. No word on when that hearing will take place for him. Marquez hits and takes a strike. All sliders so far and effective. Here's something that might surprise you. Lefties against Will Smith hitting 269. Really? Right at 270. Can you believe that? No. That's shocking. How about this for a shockeroo? Right-handers are two for 27. They're hitting 0, 74. So he's like James Russell. Reverse splits. Yeah. Yep. Weird how that happens. Seventy eight appearances for Smith last year. And 30 holds good for third in the National League. Uh, tied Tony Watson of the Pirates for the most relief appearances. O2 pitch. Again, we talk about value. Left handers who can do what he does. Teams looking for bullpen help will pay a king's ransom. For a guy like Will Smith. That's if Milwaukee decides to unload. One ball, two strikes. And Marquez shoots it into left center field. A base hit. So the splits continue to work the way Joe mentioned them. Marquez has a five game hitting streak. One of the things that makes him so tough is how he hangs in there against lefties. Just fought this one off, trying to make sure that he had that outer half covered on the slider. Punched one in there. Some insurance would be nice. It's a 2 1 Braves lead in the eighth. Todd Cunningham with a second inning double highlights his offensive day. Ah! See Smith's effectiveness against the man batting right handed. Todd's a switch hitter, but the lefty on the mound, he'll move to the other side of the plate. Looking for his first hit right handed. Ah! Oh, and two. Nice back door breaking ball. Pitcher long, long, long ago by the name of. Candy Cummings is credited with the invention of the curveball. Many who thought it was a physical impossibility to make the baseball bend. Well, he proved it to be possible. 
And his grandson pitched in the big leagues. His name was John Cummings. He was a Seattle Mariner reliever. I remember John. The irony of it was he didn't have a very good curveball. No, he did. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember it. One ball, two strikes. Todd Cunningham two runs on six hits for the Braves a run on three hits for the Brew Crew. Ripped foul look out folks. These are happy days for Mr. Cunningham he's playing great in the major leagues. 10 for 22 as a left hand hitter. As you mentioned looking for his first right hand hit. Pop fly foul and out of play. It's one and two still. Mike Fultonevich. Brilliant start today. And trying to go three and one. Did he go? No swing. And on a ball in the dirt. Markakis will move to second base. So that takes away the double play opportunity. And now a hit could bring home Marquez with a very important run. Nice effort by Centino to block the ball, got in front of it. It just skipped right off of his equipment and arm, obviously. Here comes the 2 2 pitch. And a swing and a miss. And Cunningham's going to be called out. Did. Yeah, the, he got hit with a pitch, I think, on a pitch he was swinging at. But he swung at it. I heard, out. I heard something yeah. hit. I didn't know if it was the bat hitting the catcher's equipment or he swung and missed so badly that the ball hit the catcher. Yeah. That's what I saw. We'll see on a replay if that was accurate. Swung at it. Hit him on the foot. Strikeout, dead ball. <laughs> he may take some heat from that one on the plane. As Maxwell Smart would say, missed it by this much. <laughs> <laughs> now AJ bats and a bouncing ball towards second. And Smith is out of the soup in the bottom of the eighth inning. Last call for Milwaukee. The Braves need three outs and protect a 2 1 lead.
Of course, it is Memorial Day weekend. We're celebrating all weekend long here at Turner Field. And it was really neat. Before the game, we saw something in the dugout. Lieutenant Tyler Williams in the Army got to know Freddie Gonzalez. He played baseball, Tyler did, at Army a couple of years ago and then gave Freddie Gonzalez a tour there. And they have stayed friends for the years. And Tyler brought this plaque to Freddie, presented it to him before the game. And Freddie certainly appreciated that a lot. Johnny Gomes tried it out. That is an actual ax that rangers do use and i think johnny made a little dent in the bench freddie said hey i've got that there in case players come to complain about not getting enough playing time <laughs> I, I gotta tell you the thought of johnny gomes swinging a ranger axe terrifies me no, i don't want to be anywhere near the clubhouse no. or anywhere he he is with it no jason Grilly could use a clean inning how about it going for another save but his last five outings he's either given up a hit or a walk or both. I'll be interested to see how effectively Gomez swings the bat. Remember, hit on the right hand by a pitch in the seventh inning. And it looks like he's got a, a wrap on the forearm and looks like he's wearing a thicker batting glove. One ball, no strikes. I tell you how the hands feeling. He tried to bunt. Good crowd today, 30,612. I watched the Braves outpitch the Brewers today, 2 1, with three more outs left to get. Popped him up. Here's Inski back to the screen. Into the signage. He's all right, I think. One ball, two strikes. Looked like uh, Gomez took his top hand off the bat right away, too. You know, the, that wall creep crept up on AJ just a little bit. An inside fastball to take care of Gomez. The pitch. Fastball, but he missed with it. Two and two. A lot of matchups with Grilly from their days in the NL Central with Jason pitched for the Pirates. And strike three called. One down. 94 over the corner. Gomez strikes out for a second time. Well, that was a good spot. If your right hand is bothering you, you've got to go out and get a pitch. That's awfully hard to do. It'll be interesting to follow that tomorrow and see once they've x rayed it or really checked it out if he's okay. Yeah, I hope he is. I Me mean, too. He's obviously an electric player and somewhat of a lightning rod, but. Boy, is he talented. Hopefully his hand will be all right. As Adam Lind bats with bases empty. He's over two with a walk. Lind takes high. Got to be careful with this guy. He's got power too. Lind has five hits in his last 29 at bats and one RBI on the road trip. Swinging for the fences, didn't get it. This trip for Milwaukee began May 15th in New York with the Mets, then Detroit, and now Atlanta. They're home for the Giants and Diamondbacks next. So we'll catch San Francisco after a long flight home from Milwaukee after our series begins with the Dodgers. 1 1 pitch for Lynn. Beautiful breaking ball. Strike two. Back door. Old Candy Cummings would have been proud. Ah! 
He went around, Grilly grunted as he uncorked a 96 mile an hour heater. Two down. To say he put it all into this pitch would be an understatement. Now the crowd on its feet, hoping to see Chris Davis subdued. Davis one for three. All one. Bringing it today. One ball, one strike. I don't know the answer to this question, but I would love to know the number of pitches thrown in this game were at 94 miles an hour or higher. I know the answer. A lot. <laughs> yeah. A ton. I mean, a it, whole bunch. It's been Powder River Day. Hit it if you can see it. Not many have. Two balls and a strike. Ah, all three to Chris Davis. Twenty seventh out with a one run lead the toughest out in baseball to get. And you don't want to walk him. So I'm going to have to challenge Davis here and see if he can catch up. He lost him outside with a fastball. And really walks Davis with two outs. So it's not a clean ninth. No. And Elian Herrera the batter. Herrera struck out in the second against Fulton Avich, but fly to center and last time up hit a deep fly to left for a sacrifice fly. He was catching up in many ways to the fastball. And a sacrifice fly he fouled off several pitches too that were good high 90s fastballs. Thinking fastball got the breaking ball instead. I think Prasinski's called one of his best games of the year too today. I agree. Using the youthful exuberance as a weapon against the Brewers today. The ball is at a strike. He tried to butt, didn't get it. I mean, really is just wearing out the vocal cords. I, I don't I appreciate Herrera's contribution there because if he hits a double he ties the game up. If he punts it it's still going to take a hit to tie it up. Listen to this ballpark. Isn't this great? Oh two. Ball game. The Braves are over 500. For the first time since April 27th, the Braves have a winning record. Atlanta now 22 and 21. They take three out of four from Milwaukee. The bullpen spectacular, Fultonevich spectacular, and two runs enough for the Braves to beat Milwaukee on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Grilly's pumped. Hope you are too, Braves country. 2 1, your final score. Joe and I are back to the ballpark to recap. An exciting day of baseball Braves after baseball this. Was brought to you by. Cheery five-hour energy shots, helping support Special Operations Warrior Foundation.